So here in this video, the prime opposition, Congress party, Rahul Gandhi has asked few wonderful questions to Mr. Modi, and this is basically pulling his leg from the day one of this. But he calls it a scam. I won't call it a scam, but what? Prime Minister and Home Minister have done was wrong and uh, let's go and watch the video and let's take the financial So ye jo aap dekh rahe hain Hindustan ki stock market ki history ka sabse bada scam hai aur iske bare mein hum kuch sawal puchna chahte hain Pehla sawal why did PM and HM give specific investment advice to the 5 crore families investing in the stock market is it their job to give investment advice now uh, let me answer this first is why did they give advice that's 100% right where he asked why did they give an advice they shouldn't have and uh, despite of that they have given so what or uh, should they do if they have already given here yeah, they are in a responsible position so one is they can give a good uh, press release an apology because people have lost money because of their financial advice and they have to write a 300 uh, words of essay saying why should a politician who is not a financial advisor has given an advice that would be a proper justice to this. Views were given to the same media house owned by the same business group, which is also under SEBI investigation for manipulating stock market. So here is the second question which he has asked, which is again a wonderful question. So uh, they have given this in their favorite channels which they want to. So I don't understand. Okay, SEBI has regulated them. So they didn't get close from broadcasting the content so if they have not been stopped from uh, broadcasting content it's up to a pm to talk in whatever he pleases like so i don't get the direct relationship with that but uh, he has asked uh, mixed questions where there, uh, there are two different independent things where he was uh, in a normal interview and then he spoke all of a sudden about the stock market so i don't think this question might add a lot of relevancy but uh, the channel which he has picked is z and that is completely opinionated towards right wing so it's up to him to give so i won't uh, bother this question the first one i agree with him the second one i don't agree with him he, he can give to whatever he pleases and Almost all the media houses right now are under control of Modi. So I won't I won't say it doesn't matter which he gives to. So uh, the the virality of the video of the advice which he has given was throughout all the networks. It was not just uh, for limited to those networks. So it it has spread throughout India, and also I have seen financial channels and financial advising Instagram pages. Uh, publishing that content so i didn't buy into that but that uh, coming from a responsible and a uh, good opposition of politics or leadership uh, that shouldn't have happened connection between the bjp the fake exit pollsters and the dubious foreign investors who invested one day before the exit polls were announced and made a huge profit at the cost of five crore families we demand a JPC into this. We are absolutely convinced that this is a scam. Somebody has made thousands of crores of rupees at the cost of Indian retail investors. And the Prime Minister and the Home Minister have given an indication to buy. And this is a criminal act. So we demand today a joint parliamentary committee to investigate this. So on one side, Rahul Gandhi is absolutely correct that uh, there has to be a joint commission action against this and also, you know, involving some kind of bulldozing and other things. Are these people 
they are responsible for the market moving left right and going up and down and other things so let's see what the chart suggests here so i have uh, been in markets for over seven years or let me just tell you basics here that most of the time the foreign investors are the counterparty for the clients and every time institutions are the counterparties for clients uh, that has been the pattern since a long time not just in india but throughout the world so because institutions have a lot of funding foreign investors as well as domestic investors have a lot of tools and other informations which they have on their plate where they know actual information but what happened here in this case it is exit polls and the question which he has framed is what's the link between ex exit polls and noting and the exit polls were completely skewed i mean everyone was giving more than 300 for no development and the exit polls were not even close enough for the uh, NDA and Modi government. So this is giving, uh, this gives some kind of correlation, but I can't say this might be the cause, the actual cause. So let's see. Uh, so this moves like this periodically happening in stock market on, on 31st May till here, it was gone up by 3% from the 3%, the market fell on 4th, just around on 4th, it has fell greater than, uh, it fell almost 8% for a, for an instance, but again, again and, uh, and by the end of the day, it, it went to 5. Well, when did this happen, this kind of big falls happen? It doesn't happen in just a single day. So if we see when did this happen, if we, if we see this, even this was 2% fall, let's go back to a COVID season, okay? Let's go, when there was COVID, what was the market fall like on, let's not take the small things, okay, the, the drastic ones, let's see, take this, how much the market fall here. So in a single day, the market has fell like 4%, okay? This was a good fall, 4% is good in a day and that too on an index, but let's see another fall. So on COVID, there was other fall of the market from here to here and let's say two days fall was 4% and almost, uh, almost four days fall in a single day and bouncing back is something weird and fishy, but the main tragic things here has started because of the exit polls and prediction of exit polls. So there are market tools which and points which take the decision so it's not just humans and these were done with the points which were used and if you see when did it happen exactly the poll started at before market opening so the market immediately fell and then the polls came out and the india alliance and india were in a close fight so this gave market a feeling that it's not because of exit polls, but it gave market some kind of a fear. Uh, and this fear has created this kind of, you know, what is a fear? What is a problem if India wins? Right? If in India wins, there will be a strong opposition, which will be having a jittery government as a whole. So, NDA can't function as an independent unit, but India as an alliance will have a uh, will make uh, Modi more tired and Modi will be much responsible for every action which he takes and in parliament not get enough votes to get all the plans done. So, you know, that's the reason for the next five years the government might not do much of governing. So, that's the reason of Jitter. And also, even though the India Alliance Unbind can't make greater than BJP that wasn't predicted by the exit polls. The quants which had to exit the positions and other things, not just humans were involved here, and also the trade on election day is common. So, this happened even in the past, not just now, but uh, the volatility in market during polit 
hectical season or during the uh, the counting work counting day is common you can also watch suchta dalal's video on this and also markets are on the all time highs so uh, so there can be these kind of corrections which are expected so i won't directly relate them to the polling and are the real questions which i want the opposition to ask the government which it didn't so i want opposition to be much logical and evolve into much better opposition than asking silly questions and linking everything and fighting on that so what i want uh, the questions which i have to frame here is basically paytm was inspected with rbi and sevi was involved in pr sundar he has been scrutinized by sebi if he has made money through various uh, things but he was not a financial advisor so sebi took around 6 crores plus from him i guess i have also mentioned multiple reasons and what exact reasons were there in the previous videos but let's not go there no this is one and the se- then the second was paytm who was a startup of india which i am invested in by the way so which was basically uh, what modi was promoting and was a savior during the pandemic had few banking issues that is regulatory compliances which were in shared publicly with anyone it's up to the rbi to do this and handle this but at the same time if it is an independent organization and it is not controlled by the finance minister and prime minister of india if if rbi is not controlled by the finance minister and the pm of india and if it's not involved in paytm and the scotland bank which fell down and a lot of uh, things which are going against whoever was uh, supporting the opposition so rbi is against them or even i don't understand here so rbi works independently sometimes a uh, work under at the influence of few other ministries of government they should but there should be a loose link there is they should be loosely coupled they are extremely tight and under the control of government and they are working under the pressure of government so is the justice equal for everyone so is the justice equal for a person like pr sundar and prime minister of india and prime minister of india is a public servant and pr sundar is a citizen of india both are almost equal in in the terms of citizens both are equal citizens for me and i guess uh, pr sundar might have voted for modi and he also appreciated uh, nirmala sitaraman most of the times but <laughs> that's not the entire point right that the the point which i am trying to uh, face here is why shouldn't the law be equal for everyone that's the entire problem here that it's different for a uh, prime minister and it's different for home minister and if it's different for all the bjp ministers the the massive change which has to uh, be brought here by the opposition has to always target to make the associations or make this uh, institutions which are controlled by government completely loosely coupled and work independently and go against the government that is what has to happen here so you want i if i was in uh, rahul gandhi's shoes what i would have asked him asked these questions one what is the rbi doing right now what is the actions which sebi took on this citizen who has influenced so many people and this has to be the questions which you have to ask sebi and rbi and they have to be responsible for this not prime minister or anyone so the answers the questions will be for rbi and the court cases and joint commissions whatever will be routed to rbi and should be routed and they should take the action on pm they should take the action on uh, the home minister not 
asking, giving the joint commission and redirect codes and again getting here, the institutes have to be extremely strong. Whatever institutes we are going to establish, so we are a young democracy, we have to establish them uh, by being extremely loosely coupled This video is for Rahul Gandhi. Share it if you think this adds value to the opposition and share it till it reaches there. So we can do that. So we can reach till Rahul Gandhi to ask or to make him ask this question specifically coming from a family of Indira Gandhi and the emergency. BJP had fought that moment and they fought against her. I don't understand where BJP has lost and how, how Congress is fighting for this kind of democracy, but ultimately there are a lot of things which have changed. The institutions were under control of Indira Gandhi, which we all fought and got them back, even though she was a great leader. But that doesn't make you know, Indira Gandhi any different from uh, the Modi right now. So we have to change the dictatorship mentality which Indian democracy has towards this. I guess Rahul Gandhi has a better understanding of this right now than anyone else in this. So coming from that family directly and also opposing this, I, I guess he is a person who is willing to listen. So let's focus more on keeping institution independent and making them much stronger like that. As an opposition, what you can do for the next five years is try to make the independence work independently and have a complete control of themselves so that even though you are in an opposition, you are working as an actual government and once, let's say, if you are in power, you will you will not have control over that and we have complete democracy in India. As an opposition, please try to fight against the major things which are happening against and what were your policies on. So, to protect democracy is what you can do. So, work on that. Don't ask uh, questions just for the sake of asking questions. So, few uh, the first question, only the first question made clear sense, even though the second and third were wonderful questions and linked questions, I guess anyone, uh, can, that can be coincidence or anything, but the main question is the advisory questions and linking them to democracy is the major thing. So, how can... Uh, how can the law be different from Prime Minister to an average citizen? That is what has to change. So the law has to be same for everyone. That is That has to be the beauty of democracy which has to be appreciated. That has not been appreciated since the independence. But we have to strive to get every independent individual of this country a right for justice.